Alright guys, Todd Cray back again today. I hope you are all doing well and enjoying your day so far. It's a very interesting topic to run through today, mainly regarding the meta change which supposedly is coming to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War very soon indeed. Since the XM4 has been gone, the question mark has been, okay, the Krig, the QBZ, what's really better? The 74U, is it too overpowered? I'm sure certainly some assault rifles will say that. But do, well, it does certainly seem, and we're going to talk about this video, that some changes are coming to the meta. Parasite seems to think that the FFAR and the MP5 are certainly going to be getting used, and also some and changes to control that we're going to discuss in a few minutes time. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Luckily, if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, just wanted to mention this again. We talked yesterday about Checkmate Search and Destroy not being a well, the pros not being too happy with it generally. Hit your rides like, okay, stand off when. And this I thought was a pretty interesting stat. Out of 17, well, 17 times the Checkmate has been played, 11, I think, round 11 stats, maybe even said it could be 12 as well, but 11 or 12 of um, the times it's been played, it has gone all the way to around 11 and it kind of shows that I mean you could say that's exciting but at the same time it kind of shows that um, the map it tends to be designed that defense wins the majority of the time and um, you can only really go to B as we discussed yesterday so it's kind of frustrating and I think a lot of people would want checkmate gone at the same time some teams still seem to like play it quite a lot regardless right so you know there, there's two sides of the whole coin here but um, yeah, I think a lot of people would hope that we get some other map into the game and this I thought was also interesting before we go on to talk about the meta Dallas Empire in their search and destroys this is um, a big surprise to me, to be honest, is around 11 stats also says Empire were 30 and 19 in SD last year. That's pretty solid. Nothing exactly out of control. I mean, um, FaZe are already like 12 in 2 or something, but um, they've already lost 11 at that being Empire so far this season. Only better that season with 33 and 19, that being FaZe. It just seems weird to me because both teams kept 4 out of 5 of their players going into 4 versus 4. You would imagine with, you know, Crim6, I mean, Hoogily, Shotzi, you've got Rambo Ray as the coach. Search and Destroy should be one of their bread and butter game modes. It really hasn't been, and you have to be a good search team if you're the Dallas Empire, especially given the fact that right now these are best of nine grand finals. I mean, if they, maybe they'll change it right and add a 1-0 advantage. I hope they do that for this stage. But if they don't, and it's just a straight best of nine as it was last time, then, um, well, FaZe have four Search and Destroys out of nine maps. That's how it works. There's five respawns, there's four Search and Destroys in nine maps. I I mean, who is possibly going to beat FaZe in the world if um, the four search and destroys? I mean, FaZe are going to probably win at least three of those. And then they just have to uh, win two respawns, which they're certainly going to do. And they're going to win the grand finals. Like in a format like that, who's even going to touch FaZe right now? Especially given the fact that Dallas Empire search and destroy has not been so good. I mean, there's a round 11 stat say as well. Against Minnesota Rocker and Atlanta FaZe, they are 0 in 8 against those two teams. 9 in 3 against the rest, right? So I suppose it's just FaZe and Rocker that have had their number particularly. And against the other teams, they're actually not too bad. But, uh, you know, certainly this stat right here, 0 and 8, they haven't won a search against FaZe and Rocky yet. That is pretty tough to see, especially the amount of times they played FaZe, of course, in the winners' finals, grand finals of the last major. So let's talk about the meta then. So as Ruskin says yesterday, AK-74U, best AR of all time, change my mind. Hop on the 60 hertz, it'll change your mind and OBS. Maybe one day I'll get a sniff of a server like that in the Pro League. But this is what some of the pros have been saying. The fact that the Krieg is so much better on 60 hertz than it was some of the other weapons. And that seems to be the go-to weapon right now. However, the 74U has still been very good indeed. I'm sure, well, I'm sure Trek are looking at the statistics in terms of what people are using in public matches and probably saying, okay, like, okay, maybe the 74U is slightly too good, maybe slightly overrepresented in terms of these statistics counts. As Looty is like, look, why haven't they GA'd the QBZ yet? But at the same time, I think a lot of people are looking at the QBZ right now, especially the pros and thinking, okay, hang on a second, the Krieg is actually seems to be better on these 60 hertz servers than the QBZ is. And uh, well, maybe meta changes are going to change exactly what is used regardless, because this is what's happening. I believe it's happening like today or something like that. Maybe we get patch notes in a little bit of time, but um, I believe this is happening pretty much imminently. These are the changes. LC10, AK-74U, all this stuff is being changed. And this is something I actually didn't see the other day, but Parasite goes into a little bit of detail right here. Now, we know that the pros communicate, and Parasite, of course, well, he maybe he was a pro at the time, actually, for London Royal Ravens, when some of these discussions were being had, that, um, you know, with discussions with Trek as to what should change, what meta changes should happen, and uh, they kind of get to understand ahead of time what exactly is going to be happening here. As he says, recall being added or tuned for some weapons, possible buffs to the Krig and FFAR, AK-74U, question mark. Now what's interesting is where he got the, the idea that it was going to be, you know, which things are going to be buffed, which things are going to be nerfed, because it doesn't say, it just says they're going to be tuned. But as he says in the replies, as TJ says, it's almost like you know what's going to happen, you know, maybe, maybe not, he says, and then also this in reply, Krig is not getting a buff, it is, I know it is. So um, apparently the Krig's getting even better, the FFAR is getting better, 
And then you've got the whole question that the 74U is getting nerfed. What SMGs are going to come in instead? And as our Parasite says in this clip last night on the flank, he believes that actually it's the MP5 that's going to come into play. And also the FFAR as well, I believe he was mentioning elsewhere. But the MP5 potentially is going to be the new SMG in the meta. But that isn't actually getting changed right here. So maybe the MP5 in its current state, which says to me that maybe, like, um, I mean, if the FFAR gets buffed and the Krig gets buffed and the 74U is gone, and now we just have to use the base MP5, I mean, um, honestly, ARs could be pretty dominant. That could favor some of the teams in the league. Look, and I'm not saying yeah, anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm not gonna give out the information. I just think we're gonna be running MP5s. I'm oh, not. hot take coming out of Chris oh. Parasite, ladies and gentlemen. He I, I sees the MP5, MP5 coming into play. I think we're gonna is, be running is MP5s. This the Parasite seems to be gearing up and ready to go with it as well. 12 kill spree in a scrim a few days ago with the FFAR in hand. So right now, this has been used, I think, a lot on the European amateur side as well already. And right at the start of the game, the FFAR was the dominant weapon. We talked about Dash UI. We talked about optics issues earlier today. If the FFAR comes back into play, you can certainly see a world in which the Dash UI world really steps up its performance. Because as Octane was saying in the video that we discussed earlier, like Dash is so good when the weapons are kind of do-it-all weapons, right? And this FFAR right at the start of the game was was certainly a do-it-all weapon and it seems like might maybe what they're trying to do here is um they bring the FFAR back pretty much to its launch state right because it launched it was so good they nerfed it significantly and the FFA got so much worse and then they brought it back somewhat they buffed it a little bit in terms of its recoil and now supposedly they're going to be buffing it again and if that is the case that may have a pretty significant impact on how good at some of these players are with this particular weapon and well clearly Parasite frying with it as well he tends to be pretty good with these non-meta guns and well maybe it actually is going to be coming back into the meta in addition if these changes come into effect but again uh, you know, it really does beg the question in terms of what the SMG line is going to look like because okay FFAR comes back maybe it's not quite as good as it was right to the start of the game the Krig maybe gets even better and then you're thinking okay what SMGs are we going to use right now because to our understanding at least you know the, the AK-74U is getting nerfed the LT-10 I mean thankfully that's going to get nerfed as well supposedly at least uh, well, to save my, save my sanity in league play and then we've got the other weapons I mean let's have a look at what they mentioned actually right here so they talk about in terms of SMGs, the KSP, the Milano potentially getting buffs. I mean, the MAC-10 as well, but that hasn't really been used regardless. The Milano is the interesting one, because just a few days ago, we saw Classic using it in a scrim up against Optic Chicago for the Paris Legion side, and that, that kind of did ask the question, okay, what exactly is going on? Why is he using the Milano? You know, has he heard behind the scenes that the Milano is getting some sort of buff? Uh, that is a big question mark, but then there's also this side of things, right? So we'll talk about the changes, I'm sure, these coming days. There's going to be some major things happening. It seems like that is certainly the case, but also control changes coming. So this, um, I'm not really sure who this benefits or who this uh, favours in a sense, but it does certainly favour the offence in general to some degree. And I'm not exactly sure, well, how they, they've decided to balance this. This was the discussion that came out a while ago, actually. We'll just look at the, the tweet that initially happens in February before we look at the clip. And as Joe DeLuca says, that being Merck, hey, just a thought, do you think giving 20 seconds for a ticking control would be better than giving a full minute once the point has been captured? That way, progress also helps the offensive team earn more time. Not a bad idea, certainly. He also was kind of concerned that maybe on something like Raid, where it's relatively balanced, that would actually tip it too far in the favour of the offensive team. Because certainly on Raid, it's a very balanced map. But Checkmate and Garrison, both of those very much heavily favour the defence. And I can see a world in which it actually makes sense to give some more advantage to the offensive team. The idea being, and this is what they're discussing in this clip, I'll just play it for you guys in just a second here. The idea being that usually in control, when you capture one of the points, your team gets another minutes to capture the other one. However, if you capture one tick on a point, you don't get any progress. This would then change it so that you actually get 20 seconds added to the timer when you capture a single tick of the points. That means that if you've got two ticks on A, two ticks on B, you're not just going to have to fly your lives into one of those hills to try and get it. You're actually already going to have an additional 1 minute 20 seconds because of those four ticks captured. So um, I think this is certainly a step in the right direction in terms of how easy offense could potentially be, as it may make a couple of these maps in Checkmate and Garrison much more interesting to watch. Going by kills is the worst metric I've ever played. Well, you can't just say it. What is it? Off, off of it's objective caps. ticks? Off, off yeah, ticks, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Control's actually going to play so much better. The next there's play. also a, a... I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it. Whatever. Uh, there's a... It's adding time per tick instead of time per cap. Oh, <laughs> that's a thing? I yeah. heard about that. I didn't know it's it was 20, 20, 20 seconds per tick that you get. Hey, you're yeah. welcome. Was that even, uh, like, my, announced? That's my idea. It's the same amount of time. It's the same no, amount of time. It's not, time, but it's not it's a different differently. Uh, 
I mean, I, honestly, I don't think that's a big deal that you even say anything I mean, it's like that. To be honest, right? it's a good change. I think every, I think that's like, if anything, that's good. If it'll get people excited, because I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one. However, at the same time, it's not exactly clear how much of an improvement this is for the offense. And also, on raid, does it now tip raid too much far in the favor of uh, the offensive team? The fact that they can get a couple of ticks here and there, and that now they get plenty of time to actually finish off the job. I'm not sure how much difference it does make. I think on certain maps it makes some difference. I'm not sure exactly which teams it favors. I think just in offense on general. General, it probably improves the game. It's pretty cool to see this suggestion from Merc B actions a little bit further down the line. Wanted to go back to this then, of course. So as Dashi says not too long ago on the 9th of March, hashtag buff the FFAR. I wonder if at the time there was also some discussions or already some discussions behind the scenes between the pros as to what was going on here, whether the FFAR was going to get improved to some degree, because that seems like what's going to happen. And Dashi was so good with it early on, and I'm sure that if you're an Optic fan right now and you're looking at your team and you're looking at Dashi struggling with the Krig and the QBZ, you're thinking, okay, the FFAR meta may be the one to, to suit Dashi and bring it back to this kind of superstar level with a do-it-all weapon that he's tended to be so good with throughout his career. I just wanted to finish off with this unbelievable video. I do remember seeing this actually back in the day, but uh, this is just pure entertainment. Joey's getting bodied on the timeline these last couple of days, that being, of course, the uh, you know the, the coach for the Seattle Surge. But this is on the 12th of August 2018 on Black Ops 4. I, I guess this is League Play or something of, of the sort, but he comes in here, I believe this is called the Spectre, right, or whatever this gun is, goes down to plant the bomb at B on Gridlock and just gets completely trick shot I've never seen anything like it this guy shoots him with the auger a couple of times just completely bodies him I mean I like only me poor guy says RST he's just pure entertainment just a couple of days ago Joey Dubsy was filling in for Seattle Surge in a script for some reason because Octane couldn't make it and he was going 5 and 29 and now you know RST is retweeting this in 2018 where he gets absolutely bodied by you know by a trick shot I mean like I've never seen anything like this it's just absolutely out of control fair play to this guy for nailing him and uh, yeah this will certainly go down in history enjoy taking all your thoughts on this stuff in the comments section I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the usual work because I know you enjoy this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Enemy down.